What's up, Mavletic lovers and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Maverick Postgame. We've got another full show for you today, as the football team unfortunately gets demolished. And women's soccer continues on their win streak. Plus, men's soccer also has a spectacular win. And volleyball closes out the weekend tournament with another incredible victory. All of that and so much more as we move ahead into this recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. So with that being said, I'm your host, Grace Metcalf. And I'm Isaac Klein. Let's dive into all the game-breaking stats, off-the-wall wins, heartbreaking losses, and in-depth analysis of our CMU Athletics. Roll, Roll it! it. Hello everyone, once again, I'm Isaac Klein. And I'm Grace Metcalf. Let's hop right in and take a look at all the math-tastic action that took place this week here at CMU. The Colorado Mesa football team had an unfortunate defeat against Western Colorado with a loss of 7-43. The Mavericks' five first quarter possessions netted a negative 39 yards in a total of 12 plays. Their longest drive of the game was only 29 yards, that coming in the second quarter and resulting in a punt down 17-0. Quarterbacks Gavin Herberg and Leslie Richardson were either sacked or tackled behind the line of scrimmage 13 times, with Gianni Hurd caught behind the line once with those 14 plays costing CMU 85 yards. The running game, which has yet to get on track, netted only five yards. That total was zero until the final play of the game, when Marvin Jones picked up five yards as CMU ran out the clock. The game was halted for nearly one hour, one play into the fourth quarter, by lightning on the blustery day in Gunnison. Strong wind hampered CMU's ability to throw the football when the Mavericks were able to contain Western's strong rush. Colorado Mesa's only score came on defense when Julius Carter intercepted Drew Nash and returned the ball for a touchdown, pushing his way across the goal line with 14 minutes and one second on the clock in the third quarter, pulling CMU within 20 points, 27-7. The defense shut out the Mountaineers in the third quarter, but Western scored 16 points in the fourth, including a sack of Herberg in the end zone for a safety. The Mountaineers also blocked a punt, which was returned for a touchdown and a 41-7 lead before the safety in the final four minutes. As a team, the Mavericks fell very short in the statistics. The stats were as lopsided as the final score. Western had 26 first downs to CMU's four, outrushed the Mavericks 188-5, and had 255 yards passing to the Mavs 48. The Mavericks averaged only 1.2 yards per play to Western's 5.1. Punted nine times, lost two fumbles, and had one pass intercepted. The Colorado Mesa women's soccer ran their season opening win streak up to eight games with another dominant win, this time 5-0 over Black Hills State University. Abby Fotheringham scored two goals in the game's seven minutes, and Madison Derrera had two assists as Shelby Steele, Mira Hewick, and Evelyn Hammer also found the net. The Mavericks seemingly had the ball for almost the entire match, keeping it pinned in the Yellow Jackets' defensive half. The Mavericks drove right down the field and earned two corner kicks within the first 40 seconds. After taking the second one short, Derrera found fa Fotheringham at the back post for a 1-0 lead just 55 seconds in. Fotheringham put, in another, put another chance over the goal for just the four-minute mark, then found a second goal just under seven minutes into the game, again marking a run to the back post. Fotheringham got on the end of a of Kylie Wells' cross. Her first shot attempt was saved by Wood, but the rebound went directly to the Maverick midfielder with wide open net in front of them from close range. The Mavericks didn't ease up on their, dominant, on their dominance in the second half out shooting Black Hills 17-0. Derrera found Hewick at the top of the box for CMU's fourth in the 60th minute. Colorado Mesa's most eye-pleasing goal of the day was its final one. Michaela Ecker controlled the ball in midfield and struck a long-range cross over the top of the Yellow Jackets defense. Running in from the left wing, Isabel, Isabel Schober met it with her head and lofted it towards the goal. As a team, the Mavericks outshot the Jackets 36-1, with 15 of those being on goal. The Lady Mavs had also managed to have less fouls than the Jackets, 6-9. 
The Colorado Mesa men's soccer tallied their first RMAC win of the season in convincing fashion, beating South Dakota Mines 4-1. The opening 20 minutes was an absolute onslaughter on the Maverick net for CMU with nothing to show for it. The Mavericks completely dominated the first half, but were foiled on several occasions by the South Dakota Mines keeper. Matthias Lazari's 36th minute strike was tipped over the bar at full extension by the hard rocker keeper and Manuel Ponce Casas and Leo Morales had shots saved in a 30 second span in the 39th minute. In the second half, Colorado Mesa was more content to pass out the clock while the hard rockers were also better on the ball. The two teams were even 5-5 five five on second half shots after the lopsided 18-0 first half margin. South Dakota Mines got a goal back on its first shot attempt of the day when Hayden Harmarillo fired a hard, low shot past Chavez in the 49th minute. The Mavericks pushed the lead back to two on a thunder strike from Dimitrios Leonglio in the 55th minute. With multiple Maverick attackers and hard rocker defenders in the box, the ball was cleared out to the junior center back, who had loads of time to take a touch past a defender and hit a bullet into the right-hand side of the net. Colorado Mesa's fourth came in the 89th minute, when Moses Magans, Magans had a headed tap-in off a wonderful run and cross from Moses Martinez. As a team, the Mavericks outshot the Hard Rockers 23-5 and placed 16 shots on goal. The Hard Rockers also had double the number of fouls that the Mavs had. The Mavs improved to 6-2-2 two two overall and 1-0-1 in the RMAC with the victory. The nation's 11th ranked Colorado Mesa, Uni Colorado Mesa University Mavericks proved to, be better, proved to be the better team, especially in the second half of each set and played some superb defense. Vault in a 25-17, 25-23, and a 25-20 victory over a scrappy Westminster University Griffin team on Saturday. Maverick Lieberg Allison Waller finished with a match with a match high 19 digs while defensive specialist Jordan Woods tallied 13 digs and 17 service receptions, helping the Mavs to a 65 to 57 advantage in total digs offensively. The Mavs were paced were paced by outside hitter Sidney Leffler who had 13 kills, and right side hitter Emma Shaddix, who finished with 10. The Mavs never trailed in that set, but could not shake the Griffins, who were within a, within a point at 16 to 15, before Leffler took over the, before Leffler took over the set, tallying five of, her, five of her kills in what was a nine to two extended run, including the set winner. The Mavs then trailed 11 to eight in the second set before battling back to take a 15 to 14 lead thanks in part to a 4-0 run that featured back-to-back -back kills from Doherty and another from middle hitter Savannah Spitzer. The set, remainer, the set remained tight and was tied at 15, 17, 18, 19, and 21 before kills from Leffler and Doherty gave the Mavs a 23-21 lead. Attacking error coming out of a Griffin timeout then gave the, Max, the Mavs three set points at 24-21 after being unable to convert on the first two. Doherty recorded her sixth kill of the set to win it. The Mavs also trailed as many as th three points at 9-6 to six, and later by two at 18-16 to 16, before Shaddock's kill followed by three straight Griffin hitting miscues switched the two-point deficit into a 2018 Maverick lead. As a team, the Mavericks went on a perfect 59 for 59 on service receptions as they held the Griffins without an ace, had four players in the double figures for digs, in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Regional Pod Finale. The Mavs moved to a 14-1 overall, with that was their 17th straight victory over the conference's westernmost opponent. Now that we have recapped some of the games, it's time to announce our Maverick of the Week. Our Maverick of the Week goes to Haley Klasner. Haley broke the program's all-time career assist record last weekend as the redshirt junior now stands alone in Maverick history with 24 assists and counting. Congratulations Haley for your outstanding performance. You are Maverick of the Week. We are now at the end of our show and it is time for our closing statements. My closing thought is on the football team. Their game last week was a bit of a smackdown. I'm just hoping they can pull it together for this week's game against Colorado School of Mines. I would like to see us beat them, but if the team plays like they did this past weekend, I doubt that will happen. I guess we'll see. My closing thought is on the women's triathlon team. 
Their past competition, they placed fourth overall with two of their athletes finishing in the top 10. They are preparing to head into the championship portion of the season, competing at the Women's Collegiate Triathlon West National Qualifier. They have won the last four NCAA Division II West Region team titles and placed second at the national meet last year. Hopefully, we can see more success from them again this year. Hopefully. Now that we have wrapped up all action from this week and given our closing thoughts, it is time to close the show. Thank you everyone so much for joining us this week on Maverick Postgame. I've been your host, Grace Metcalf. And I've been Isaac Klein. Be sure to go check out our channel 62.2 for more games and updates. We'll catch you next week on an all-new recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. Stay safe, Mavs. Study hard. Go to a game or two. And of course, have yourselves a nice, amazing day. <laughs>